She had everything to be a star in the 21st century, talent, charisma, and beauty. Her early films showed great promise, but she fell victim to the worst aspects of a ruthless industry, which led her down a dark path. Today, on Rise and Fall, Lindsay Lohan. Lindsay D. Lohan was born on July 2, 1986 in the Bronx, New York. Her mother, Donata Molina Nicolette, was a singer and dancer. Her father, Michael Lohan, worked on Wall Street. Lindsay's parents had a turbulent relationship, and she often witnessed them arguing and spending time apart. Michael, in particular, had a troubled past. He had legal problems for insider trading and had been sentenced to three years in prison in 1990. Despite her family instability, Lindsay eventually had three siblings. Thanks to her mother, Dina, she began her career in the entertainment industry at the age of three. In 1989, she was signed by the Ford Modeling Agency and began modeling for brands like Calvin Klein Kids. She then moved on to commercials for major companies, including a gelatin commercial with Bill Cosby, who was then still known as America's Dad. At just 10 years old, Lindsay's youthful energy and charisma made her a familiar face to the public. Her breakthrough came with her role as Allie Fowler on the soap opera Another World, which quickly made her a fan favorite. Her first big break came through cinema when she was cast in the Disney remake of The Parent Trap. Director Nancy Myers was looking for a little Diane Keaton and auditioned 1,500 child actresses, including future stars like Scarlett Johansson. The lucky one was Lohan. Her film debut would be more than just a challenge. She had to portray two identical but different girls, Hallie and Annie, who grew up in the United States and Britain. However, she met the task head on and even got to share Share the screen with adult and experienced actors like Dennis Quaid and Natasha Richardson, who played her parents. The Parent Trap was released in July 1998 and grossed $92 million worldwide. This was a lucrative figure considering that it had only cost $15 million to make, and many critics praised the charismatic redhead who stole the spotlight with her double performance. At the age of 12, Lindsay Lohan seemed destined for the top. However, her next few roles were not very successful. She was cast as Rose, the daughter of Bette Midler in the sitcom Bette. She worked on the pilot episode. She was unable to continue because the production had to relocate and the actress was not allowed to travel. For a while, Lohan was able to lead a relatively normal school life, although she had to endure the teasing of her classmates. She found some comfort on movie sets. She starred in the TV movies, Life Size, and Get a Clue. Just when it seemed like Lindsay Lohan's career was over, Disney gave her a chance to revive it with a remake of Freaky Friday. The original 1976 film star Jodie Foster as a teenager who swapped bodies with her mother, played by Barbara Harris. In the remake, Lohan would play the same role alongside Jamie Lee Curtis. The young actress was not afraid to make suggestions. In the script, Anna Coleman had a gothic look. However, Lohan believed that no one could relate to a girl like that, so she went to the audition wearing a more grunge, alternative rocker outfit. Director Mark Waters liked the idea, and the writers rewrote the script to match her new style. Lohan even learned to play the guitar to give the character more authenticity. Freaky Friday grossed $160 million and helped put Lohan back on the map. However, the movie that would raise her to stardom was still missing. That movie was Mean Girls. After being captivated by the script by Tina Fey, director Mark Waters called Lindsay Lohan to offer her the lead role in a high school comedy that satirized girl fights. Lohan was thrilled to accept the role. Despite being subject to labor laws for minors, her level of professionalism impressed everyone. Mean Girls was released on April 30th, 2004, with a budget of $17 million. It grossed $130 million, making it a critical and commercial success. Lohan's performance has, was widely praised, and it was undeniable that she had the star power to be a major Hollywood actress. And her talent was not limited to acting. Her performance in Freaky Friday earned her a record deal, and in 2004, she released her first album, Speed. The album was a commercial success, proving that her fans were loyal. With the world at her feet, Lindsay Lohan was riding high on success, but her stardom wouldn't last. 
After moving to Hollywood, Lindsay Lohan was exposed to a lot of dangerous temptations. She started going to parties and hanging out with the show business crowd. In 2002, she met actor and singer Aaron Carter, who had just broken up with Hilary Duff. They frequented the same events, and tension arose between them. Carter later admitted that he had only approached Lohan because he was bored with Duff. The relationship was doomed from the start. Lohan's family life was also starting to fall apart. In June 2004, her father was arrested for beating his brother-in-law, Mark Coleman. Mark claimed self-defense, but he was still sentenced to prison. He would later be charged again for other offenses, including domestic violence against his new partner. Lohan's private life suddenly became a magnet for the media, who were eager to capture her nightly escapades and her every move. As for Dina, she was somehow living her dream through her daughter. She behaved more like a party companion than a mother. Lindsay Lohan's taste for partying began to affect her performances. In October 2005, she joined another Disney production, Herbie Fully Loaded. However, on October 21st, she was hospitalized for five days with exhaustion, fever, and headaches. Doctors attributed her health problems to the fact that she had been working long hours in a cramped vehicle while wearing a racing suit. The production of the film was put on hold until she recovered. In the meantime, the press reported that her hospitalization was due to drug problems. Despite her busy schedule, Lohan's personal life was also full of drama. In late 2004, Lohan began dating actor Wilmer Valderrama. The relationship was tumultuous and lasted only a few months. Reports say that Lohan was possessive and Valderrama was also rumored to have cheated on her with other women. This would be the first of many unstable relationships for Lohan. By then, Lindsay Lohan's every move was being scrutinized by the paparazzi. Her thinness was a topic of much discussion and speculation. In April 2005, she attended the premiere of her new film, the romantic comedy, Just My Luck. To the surprise of many, she appeared with blonde hair. The entertainment media claimed that she wanted to emulate her party girl friends Paris Hilton and Britney Spears. However, the truth was that she was preparing for a role in the movie A Prairie Home Companion. In this film, she would be directed by the acclaimed Robert Altman and star alongside Meryl Streep, Tommy Lee Jones, and Woody Harrelson. Lohan played Lola, the daughter of Streep's character, who gave her high praise for her work. After A Prairie Home Companion, Lohan was cast in another ensemble film, Bobby about the last hours of prosecutor Robert Kennedy before he was assassinated. This time, she joined an outstanding cast led by Anthony Hopkins and Sharon Stone. Lindsay Lohan was making the transition from teen celebrity to character actor alongside big names. The critics praised the change, but her personal problems were starting to take over. In the comedy Georgia Rule, Lindsay Lohan shared the screen with Jane Fonda under the direction of the veteran Gary Marshall. It promised to be another rewarding experience. However, Lohan's partying lifestyle began to affect her work. She often arrived on the set exhausted and looking unwell, sometimes missing several days of filming. In July 2006, it was leaked that James G. Robinson, the president of the studio, wrote her a letter. He told her that her tiredness was due to her partying and hangovers. Fonda shared the complaints, but she hoped that Lohan had learned her lesson as she considered her to be very talented. She added that Lohan seemed very lonely without anyone to hold her back. And she was right. Her father was drowning in his own problems, and her mother seemed more interested in profiting than in helping her. Lohan's downfall came in 2007. She checked herself into the Wonderland Center in Los Angeles, a rehabilitation center where she stayed for a month. She was determined to get her health back on track, as her addictions were out of control. Then came the fateful May 26th. According to a photographer, Lindsay Lohan and two friends left the club at 5 a.m. Lohan then returned home to drive her car. Half an hour later, she was seen speeding on the streets of Hollywood. She lost control of the car, which jumped over a sidewalk before crashing into some trees. Lohan suffered minor injuries and was taken by friends to the Century City Doctor's Hospital. Meanwhile, the wrecked Mercedes-Benz was towed and confiscated. The case fell into the hands of the Beverly Hills Police Department. After she was treated for her injuries, Lohan was arrested for driving under the influence. Lindsay Lohan was released on $30,000 bail and checked into the Promises Treatment Center in Malibu, where she spent 45 days in treatment. She was required to wear a bracelet to monitor her alcohol levels. 
rehabilitation did not prevent her from being arrested again on July 24, 2007. This time, she was charged with chasing the mother of a personal assistant she had just fired. She pleaded guilty to the charges and was sentenced to spend one day in jail, 10 days of community service, three years of probation, a $24,000 fine, and a program to educate herself about the effects of alcohol. She served her one-day jail sentence on November 15, 2007, but was released after only 84 minutes due to overcrowding. Lindsay Lohan's parents never supported her. In fact, they exploited her family's struggles for financial gain. The media, on the other hand, loved to sensationalize Lohan's misfortunes. As expected, Lindsay's career fell apart. Hollywood studios thought she was unstable and didn't want to take a risk on her. She was forced to take on smaller roles in independent films and television. Although she tried hard to stay out of trouble, Lohan couldn't do it. On May 20, 2009, she missed a mandatory court hearing because she was at the Cannes Film Festival, so she had to pay a $100,000 fine to avoid an arrest warrant. Lindsay Lohan's luck finally ran out in 2010. She was accused of violating the terms of her probation and sentenced to 90 days in prison. She entered the Century Regional Detention Center in Linwood, California on July 20, 2010. She was assigned an individual cell, but she received the same treatment as any other inmate. Mate. Due to her good behavior, she was released after 13 days. Despite her troubles, Lindsay Lohan wanted to keep working. Her big opportunity seemed to be The Canyons, a thriller directed by Paul Schrader and written by novelist Brett Easton Ellis. The film was not financed by a studio, but raised through a Kickstarter. Lohan was credited as a co-producer. However, the relationship between Lohan and Schrader was tense, and she did not promote the film, which received mixed critical reception. Despite the challenges she faced, Lindsay Lohan wanted to get her life back on track. In 2014, a documentary miniseries called Lindsay was released, recording her rehabilitation process. It wasn't a huge hit, but it helped her to recover. She moved away from parties and unhealthy relationships and found a way to repair her relationship with her parents. In the years that followed, Lindsay Lohan appeared in television shows and pursued other endeavors. Wanting to revive her film career, in 2021, she signed a two-movie deal with Netflix. Her first film was the romantic comedy comedy Falling for Christmas, in which a former child star proves that she had not lost her spark. When Lindsay Lohan came into the spotlight, she seemed unstoppable. However, her life became a cautionary tale of the dangers of being a teenage idol. Despite the scandals, she is still standing, ready to prove to the world that she is a star.